We've highlighted trees on our program with interesting fruit, interesting fall color, or just trees that are really adapted to Oklahoma's harsh climates. But with the onset of winter, you may want to add a little bit more uniqueness to your landscape by selecting trees that have interesting bark patterns. Now, one of the most popular here at our Oklahoma Botanical Garden and Arboretum is a lace bark elm, or sometimes you'll hear it called Chinese elm, which is Ulmus parvifolia. This particular one, we're estimating it to be anywhere from maybe 30, 40, 50 years old, but under ultimum conditions, they can get anywhere from 40 to 50 feet in height, and this one is pretty close to that, so it must be happy with its site. That tells us that it's very adaptable to heavy soils or various site conditions. It's considered a moderate to rapid grower. It's tolerant to the Dutch elm disease. The difference between this one and similar elm trees, though, this one particular one will flower and fruit in the fall versus a spring, so you can see still some of the seed pods that are hanging on the branches. But the most interesting thing is this bark pattern. It, as it matures, it has a tendency to peel off a little bit, but it almost looks like pieces of a puzzle that fit in there real nicely, and it really takes on a very unique characteristic as you look up the branches throughout the tree. Now another one with similar bark pattern is considered a river birch, Betula nigra. It can get anywhere from 30 to 40 feet. It's also considered a moderate to rapid grower. Many times you'll see it used as a multi-trunk specimen. Now it really has to have moist sites, so it's really not good in very heavy soils. And again, it has to have moisture throughout the hot, dry summers. The bark is very thin and papery on the younger branches with a pinkish tan color, and as it matures, it really peels back quite severely, revealing a reddish brown color, which gives it a real interesting contrast. Now, this particular one does better in Oklahoma, growing it on, say, Interstate 35 and east of that area, so it's better for the eastern part of the state. Now, a cousin to the river birch is white birch, Betula pendula, sometimes referred to as European birch. It can get 20 to 40 feet under optimum sites. It's really considered more of a moderate grower, and you'll see it used either as a single or a multi-trunk specimen in most landscapes. Now, it really needs to be planted in moist sites, although the one you're seeing here on campuses next to our ag hall is planted in a heavy soil but the big building helps protect it from wind and heat scorch, which is very important, and it gives it some protection with part shade. As it matures, it will get a whiter bark, and it too really does best, say, on the east side of Interstate 35. Well, I'm at the International Mall here on the campus of Oklahoma State University in Stillwater, and this particular tree generally has a pretty nice fall color but it's also known for its bark characteristics. Now I'm standing next to a red or swamp maple, which is Acer rubrum, and it really is just pretty much getting close to the barrier of its boundary of where you can grow it. It definitely prefers the eastern part of the Oklahoma, especially east of Interstate 35. Now generally, if it's in a happy growing condition, it can get anywhere from 40 to 60 feet tall, and it's considered a moderate to rapid grower. It also prefers moist soils, which means it really doesn't like heavy soils, but here in Stillwater, it's growing in a heavy soil, and it's doing pretty good. The bark really isn't so attractive down here, but as you look up through the tree as it matures, it's really not so much a nice texture contrast, but more of a color contrast with silvery, almost a shiny luminescence color as it matures. Again, this is red maple, and generally in the fall, you'll get a little bit of interesting fall color too, but with our early freeze, it got the leaves before they were able to change color. Now, if you'd like a little bit of uh, characteristic change with bark, maybe you want to look at white poplar, which is Poplus alba. We have them in a couple locations, again, on campus and at Centennial Grove. The tree can get under optimum conditions about 40 to 50 feet tall, also considered a moderate to rapid grower, would prefer moist soils and light soils. But when it gets in heavy soils, this tree has a problem in really sending up a lot of suckers, and that can be a big problem if you're trying to mow or keep a lawn managed underneath it. So it may be one that you want to try to grow maybe in an erosion area where you're not going to have to mulch it as much. 
Another problem with this particular tree is that it can have canker or crown gall problems, but again, the bark is very attractive with the whitish, grayish green color with prominent diamond-shaped dark lenticels as it matures. Also would be a best tree to use in the eastern part of the state. Now there is a cultivar called Boleana that's more columnar in appearance, but it doesn't sucker as bad and it can still get crown gall, but we have one on the south side of one of our buildings here on campus that does real nicely. It's quite a tall tree, but you'll notice that there's not near as many suckers. Now another option to the deciduous trees would be some of the coniferous trees. One in particular is Japanese red pine, Pinus densiflora. It's going to grow about 40 feet in height. Really it's considered a slow to medium grower. It likes well-drained soils and a slightly acidic type soil. Its growth habit is often crooked or leaning and you'll see one just on the outside of our student union here on campus that has that characteristic, but man, the bark is really attractive with an orangish red color. And when the tree is younger, it peels off in thin scales, and then later on it matures, taking on more of a grayish color with age, but it's an evergreen, so it gives you a little bit of color in that aspect too. And lastly, one that really is one of my favorite, but depending on where you're located in the state, you may not be able to get it to an actual tree form. Sometimes it's grown more as a shrub. And this is crepe myrtle, Lagerstromia indica. Under the milder climates of Oklahoma, it can get about 25 feet. It can become a small tree if it's in protected area. Otherwise, it dies back each year like it does here in Stillwater as a general rule, making more of a shrub. When it grows in a tree form, you'll see it often used in a multi-trunk form, moderate to rapid grower. The young stems rough off, becoming very smooth, almost varnished with age. And obviously you get a lot of nice color during the summer with it too, but the bark is very smooth and very attractive. So during any of your outdoor walks in the wintertime, be sure and check out the bark on some of these trees. The characteristic can really add a lot to an otherwise drab time of year. Now we've also noticed that some of the kids are very tempted and find it irresistible to want to peel off some of the bark. And if that's a concern for you, that may be another point you want to consider before purchasing some of these really unique trees.